Hey everyone, this is Rob and you are back in the abyss. Um, so for those who are non-students, one of the things that we always talk about in class is acting is like relationships. And in order for it to have that chemistry and that continuity, it has to, you know, work. And, and if you've watched these videos, we've talked about through the years, actors who've worked together, or actors and actresses have worked together and have had that chemistry. Well, you see the same kind of thing in sports. You see the same kind of thing in music. You know, I, as many of you know, I'm a huge, huge St. Louis Blues fan. And to watch them win the Stanley Cup finally last year um, was one of the greatest things ever. Um, it was something I've waited for my whole life for and all that kind of stuff. But what made that team so special was their team chemistry, the way they were as a team, the way they worked together. And that is why they were able to propel themselves to the, the franchise's first championship. So like I said, you'll see it in film, you'll see it in sports, you'll see it in music. Um, the reason I'm talking about that is um, I wanted to talk about Metal Church 11 for a minute. Yes, it's named after their 11th record, but they had a singer back in the 80s and, and early 90s, Mike Howe, who left because he wanted to raise his family and, and be around. Um, and they continued on with a different singer who was very good and very talented, but it just wasn't the same. Sometimes we'll see other bands where they end up changing a singer and, and it ends up working. Genesis with Peter Gabriel to Phil Collins, or we've talked about Black Sabbath from Ozzy to Dio, but, but it just didn't have the same metal church fill, feel, excuse me. Um, but all of a sudden they have this announcement that Mike Howes joined the band after all these years and the product was 11. And it just, I don't know if it's mental for me or if it, it it's just really the way it is, but it was like, wow, I really hear old metal church. Like, this is the way it's supposed to be. This is the way it's supposed to sound. And 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 actually, I just really believe it's not in my head. It, it is the chemistry. It is the songwriting. It is what Mike Howe brought to the band that was missing that he was able to bring back when he came back. And now, you know... Um, it, it just gives that feel. And, and that's more of why I was pointing out this album. I really enjoy it, and I'm glad he's back. Um, I really love this band in the late 80s. Um, but I wanted to talk about that chemistry and that relationship, because if you get that, um, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, Volbeat. Seal the deal and let's boogie. Like we said, they always have two names to their albums. Um, this is the follow-up to Outlaw... Gentlemen and Shady Ladies, um, a really strong follow-up to that album in my mind because I really thought that that one was great. Um, the Devil's Bleeding Crown, The Bliss is phenomenal. Um, Seal the Deal is great. There's a lot of good tunes, um, and and you know their covers kind of feel you know fixed you know uh, kind of go with that theme, you know. Um, Seal the Deal, like you know the old boxer from the early years of the you know, the immigrants coming over to America and, you know, they're fighting for money and stuff like that. Maybe you saw it in the Tom Cruise movie Far and Away that, you know, when he was fighting to make money in the early days that they were here in America, um, that kind of deal. But um, a, a nice follow-up to that album. And like I said, if you haven't checked them out, you need to because they have a really good sound. <clears throat> Madness. Um, what can I say? I've talked about him quite a bit, and I love the progression of um, how their sound is matured over the years. And I love the early stuff, but I love what they're doing here um, with um, Can't Touch Us Now. It's it's just um, really, really strong. Um, I I really enjoyed the album before this. I think We 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 C C Ya Ya Da Da was my number one. Or, or top two the year that we talked about it. And this was a great follow-up. We just talked about Volbeat following up a really strong album with a strong album, and that's that's what I Can't, Can't Touch Us Now is. The title track is phenomenal, and there's a lot of other great songs. Um, but this is um, their modern sound. So you get that sound of madness from the 80s and 90s, but you get more of a modern feel to it and very different because now they're down to six. Um, unfortunately, Carl... Smythe left the band um, and went and did a solo project. Um, and, you know, it is what it is, but he was a big part. And so to have him 
leave and, and continue on and, and keep that sound, but have the other original six still in the band, it's pretty good to have that kind of longevity for all of these years. Um, and like I said, what's cool is check out the early years of Madness when they really were ska and they had that ska sound. And if you're wondering what ska, ska is, listen to early Madness. Listen to bands like The Specials. Listen to that kind of stuff and you'll get the idea. But then listen to how they progress through the years and how their music changed and their style changed. You still have the horns. You still have all the, the, the keyboards, the piano, all of that different kind of stuff. But just in the way that they did it and, and, and changed. Um, so you get different styles of madness, which is really cool. I think they're really talented. Like I said, I, I can't wait to finally go see them next uh, next May. My number one for 2016, Moonbathers by Delane. Um, really super cool cover. Um, we've talked about them before. Charlotte Wessels on vocals. She's just so great. Um, and this is just a, an unbelievable album sucker punch is is a phenomenal song um the scum and the glory uh or the glory and the scum excuse me um you know uh dan dance macabre or dance you know they they do it in a different language but it is dance macabre the dance of death um you know um fields of gold i think is what it is um but anyways um, just a, a really, really, really powerful um, symphonic type rock metal album um, with, with unbelievable female vocals. Um, you have to give this kind of style of music a chance because, you know, it, it, the women are so powerful in their, in their voices and, and, and Charlotte is just phenomenal. And I, I just think that this was, you know, all of their stuff is great, but I think this album really came to a head and and just they just put out a really powerful 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 record um and like i said you you have to um you know give it give it a shot because it, it, it's amazing and they're an amazing man all right film side um i'm going to start off with a surprise for me in 2016 and that is Suicide Squad. I went into this movie not wanting to like it. I didn't like the fact that Jared Leto was the Joker. I mean, it, it was a joke. Um, thank God they limited how much you actually see him. But Will Smith, of course, Margot Robbie do a good job. And it was actually a pleasant surprise for me. Um, don't love the movie, but I enjoyed it. And, and I wanted to point it out because um, I, I'm open-minded. I don't necessarily... Um, have to go into a movie wanting to see it. I'll give movies a chance if I'm curious. Now, there's certain movies, if I'm not curious, I'm not even going to check it out. But if I am, I'll give it a shot. I'll see what's what, you know. And and that's what this was, and I was pleasantly surprised. I tried to give the second one, or the, the Birds of Prey, the follow-up. Um, I couldn't do it. I, you know, it was 10 minutes in, I'm like, yeah, I'm out. I, I just, I didn't like, and I thought, you know, Margot Robbie was overplaying it, which I don't think she did in the first one. Um, but it was just too much for me. But this first one... Was, was decent. All right, the comedy for 2016, Dirty Grandpa. Not not a great movie. I mean, De Niro's funny in it, but I want to talk about Zac Efron for a minute. You know, people know Zac Efron because he was that pretty boy, you know, High School Musical, those kinds of things. But he actually is a pretty strong actor. He, he, he and if, if you saw the Bundy film on Netflix, uh, you, you kind of see what his acting chops are about because he did a really nice job in that. But he does a really good job playing the the um, straight man to the comedy man of De Niro. Um, and they have some good banters. And there's definitely some good moments in this film. It's a decent comedy, not the greatest thing in the world. But I wanted to point it out and give Zac Efron props because he does a decent job. All right. Uh, we're going to go into a few movies with the formula mode. Matt Damon's back with Jason Bourne. We talked about it with the Bourne legacy a couple uh, episodes ago. Um, now they bring Matt Damon back. That was all about director for him and the reason why he didn't do Born Legacy, etc. But here he is back and uh, doing what he does, right? Matt Damon is a really good actor. He's he's consistent. He does a great job. He's got a formula what he does. And the Born series is is um, you know like the Mission Impossible series, like um, any of these other kind of, uh, the Equalizer series, even though they're different types of movies, they're the same kind of thing. You know, the Liam Neeson type themed movies, even though they're not the same characters, kind of the same idea in, in what they do. And it's consistently good. And I know people like it that he came back because they didn't love the last one. I personally did. 
Um, but but also enjoyed this one with with Matt Damon. Um, Jack Reacher, never going back. Um, not nearly as good as the first one, but wanted to point it out because I wanted to keep my Tom Cruise streak going. Um, so, you know, here he is consistently doing Tom Cruise. Uh, unfortunately, just not as strong of a film as Jack Reacher one, but still worth a watch. It's, it's still, it still has, you know, some, some thrilling moments to it and some explosions and, and action and, and, you know, he does a good job. So, I mean, if you've seen the first one, you got to see this one, you know, it's just that type of thing. Kind of segues into Captain America Civil War. You've seen them all. you got to keep seeing them, you know, and that's kind of where I'm stuck. Not only seeing them, I end up buying them. You know, I was talking yesterday about Avengers, and I kind of just get scrambled, and they're all mixed up and stuff like that. And it's just like, well, I buy them because I have to keep watching them to figure out what the hell's going on because there's so many subplots going on. But anyways, Civil War is kind of cool for two reasons for me. Number one, it introduces Spider-Man. And I think that, um, you know, um, can't think of his name off the top of my head, but he uh, he, he is the best of the of the spider-mans you know uh so far he just does a good job tom holland he he's he he really does a nice job i thought toby mcguire was fine i thought the other one was you know a miscast but i think um he does a a, a really good job so to, to see him in this film but then also um it kind of sets up the next film i believe the next um I don't remember which one it is, but it kind of sets up. And I kind of liked it if you kind of put them in line. You've ever seen that thing online where they kind of tell you what order to watch the Marvel movies in, you know, they and then they kind of connect. Um, that's kind of cool. But I, I did enjoy this one, and I actually liked this better than The Age of Ultron, and I liked it better than The Last Avengers, because um, this is kind of an Avengers movie, right? It's just under the Captain America moniker, but um, a, a decent movie. All right, changing gears a little bit, um, The Girl on the Train. I really enjoyed this movie. I think Emily Blunt does a really good job. And, of course, my girl Rebecca Ferguson's in it, um, and, and she's terrific. Um, just an interesting story. Just, um, you know, a good movie. And it goes along with my train-themed movies that I like to watch, right? I like movies that just, I don't know why, I just kind of like those movies. Although a lot of the action is not necessarily on a train, but she's on the train, you know, watching and seeing things and, and, and so on and so forth. But an interesting, unique kind of movie, and we've talked several times through the episodes that um, I am a big fan of the uniqueness of, um, you know, filmmaking. And, you know, if something is different, I'm willing to check it out. And, you know, you have two really strong actresses going at it. Um, makes for a pretty good movie. All right, my Denzel movie of 2016, The Magnificent Seven. Um, I was another one that I really enjoyed. I think all the um, you know actors do great. Chris Pratt, Ethan Hawke. Um, I I love the way this is shot. It is beautifully shot. The colors and the scenery and the sets. It is really well done. This is a remake. But the, they really did a good job of filming it outdoors and not in a studio with a green screen. It's just, it's so vibrant. Um, and I really enjoyed the movie. And uh, it, you know, it came across really good for me. I, like I said, I, I really enjoy it. Um, and uh, it was another pleasant surprise. I bought it because of Denzel. Tyler loves Chris Pratt. I sit down and watch it and loved it. Um, really cool movie. Mark Wahlberg, Patriot's Day. Whew. This, this could easily be number one. I really, really, really like this movie. And I'm actually falling into what I did yesterday where I have three finalists that are interchangeable. Um, Peter Berg did such a good job directing this movie where he takes the real life footage and then combines it with the movie footage and it just seems like it blends. It just seems all real. Uh, Wahlberg does a great job in it. John Goodman, a great job, you know, the rest of the cast and the way they tell the story. When my buddies and I were in Boston uh, last um, September, we went to the finish line and stood by one of the memorials of one of the um, victims. And you kind of just see it re for reals after watching the movie. Did I just say for reals? You see it for real um, 
you know, and it makes the movie come alive a little bit more. But you know, I remember this stuff vividly happening. You know, um, I remember driving home from workshop and listening to them uh, having the shootout in Watertown and, and the scene in the movie and stuff like that. It's just, it makes it so real. This movie is really good. It's really well done. And and it's a movie, even though the subject matter is you know, it's tragic, it's awful. Um, it, it's it's a movie I can watch over and over and over and over and over again. I just really enjoy it. I, I just, I, I, I like the movie and, you know, I remember the story. So um, it makes it easy to watch. Rogue One. Um, it's a really good movie. And I know a lot of people didn't like this. Um, I like it because I like the fact that they are new characters right um for one um and then i also love the fact that the only really old character i mean you see vader and, and you know he's pretty badass as vader and the way they connect you know this is like episode three and a half the way they connect three to four you know um not even three and a half it's like three and three quarters because it's really leading up to four more than it is finishing from three but um it's it's a um a pretty pretty powerful film. Um, and like I said, I think they do a really, really strong job. Um, all of them. And, and like I said, it, you know, this is kind of like Titanic, you know, the ending because you know, episode four, right. And yet you still are holding out hope. You know, it's, it's just an interesting story of how they all came together and how they were able to steal the plans and do all that stuff. It, it, it's a good filler movie. And, and it was really enjoyable for me. And like I said, I know some people didn't like it. Well, I'm sorry. I really did. I thought it was really, really well done. It's a really good job. And Felicity Jones as the female lead is just sensational, right? I really like her a lot. Theory of Everything, she did a great job. Don't love that movie. I mean, it's a, it was a good movie. One watch, I'm good. But she was really good. A lot of people talked about him. You know, he did Stephen Hawking, or, you know, this, this, and that. Um but she had to deal with them. She had to take care of them. And it really gave you an insight of um, how strong his wife was to be able to deal with all of that and take care of him and do all that stuff. And Felicity Jones did a phenomenal job in that film. And she's great in this. She's believable. She, she's just, I, I like her a lot. You know, she, I don't like her as much as Rebecca Ferguson, but I do like her a lot. And she's really good in Rogue One. Which leaves the number one, I guess, for 2016. You probably already guessed it, and it's probably on everybody's list. Um, and that's Deadpool. What a great, creative superhero movie. And Ryan Reynolds is phenomenal. Um, it's action, adventure, and a lot of fun, dry comedy. Um, how can you not love this movie? So I think when it comes down to it, um, of the three what would I watch the most, right? If Rogue One was on and Deadpool was on, um, I'm watching Deadpool, I think, only because of the comedy. Uh, if Deadpool's on and Patriot's Day's on, it just, I guess, depends on my mood. I mean, possibly I would watch Patriot's Day, and that's why it's up there. I, I just love that film. But, you know, I think Deadpool is, is just an easier anytime type movie to watch. And so, you know, that's why I lean toward this being number one because of that reason. But it doesn't change the fact that Rogue One and, and Patriot's Day are phenomenal films and could have easily been number one. So anyways, that's that's my um, 2016 on the um, music side. Got Delane, Moonbathers. And then on the um, Blu-ray side, I'm going to show you all three. Kind of like I did yesterday, Patriot's Day, Rogue One, and Deadpool. So, anyways, continue to leave your list. I appreciate the new viewers. Um, if, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And we will see you tomorrow with 2017. Have a good day.